The illusions mm. of safety. Be careful with probability of profit. Sp spooky. That's scary. Sponsored by the CBOE. Our very own Mike Butler on the floor of the CBOE. They never get, it, there's never an invite from me. You'll get an invite soon. All right. Thank you, Will. Oh. Yeah. Uh, no, it was really fun. Fucking here. Fun. Stale air in here. <laughs> in this box. Anything else? No. <laughs> uh, all right. Illusions of safety. Yeah. Mark and measure sponsored by the CBOE. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Love the CBO. E. Uh, yeah. Probability profit. What's what's the deal with probability profit here? Uh, it is a crucial metric that traders often prioritize as it directly ref reflects the probability of achieving positive results. So the definition of probability of profit is making one penny at expiration, the probability of making at least one penny at expiration. Mm -hmm. uh, so your probability of profit, of course, with short premium trades that are out of the money are going to be high. The further out of the money you go, the higher your probability of profit is going to be. Yes. However, return on capital may be even more important as it directly reflects potential profits and losses, especially when considering management and portfolio volatility. So with defined risk trades, it's very clear cut. It is, uh, you know, what's your what's your credit received for a put credit spread, for example? What's your credit received versus what's your max loss? It's a defined metric. With an undefined risk trade, like a short put or a strangle or whatever, your return on capital, we like to look at it as return on capital based on buying power requirement. So if I have to put up $2,000 to hold this trade and I have a $200 credit, that's a 10% potential return on capital based on buying power requirement. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not possible to get high values for both metrics simultaneously due to their invor inverse correlation. Uh, high pop, low credit. Yeah. You know, that yeah. makes total sense. Low, yeah. you know, low risk, low reward. Yeah. That's I think you can, I think you can bend this last point a little bit if you're selling premium in high implied volatility products, because that will naturally give you a higher return on capital because you're collecting more premium relative to the buying power required for that trade. Defined risk, it's a little, it's more, it's more similar. Yeah, uh, I would say between low IV and high IV. But when it comes to undefined risk trades, the higher IV the product is, if you're if you have normal buying power requirements, you're going to be able to juice that return on capital up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well said. Next slide here. So the most straightforward way to boost pop is to use further out of the money options with smaller deltas. However, this is all, this also means sacrificing potential return on capital. So finding a balance between these two factors is crucial. So this is out of the money puts uh, based on SPY at 672. You can see the max return on capital obviously gets lower as you get further out of the money. I know we like just as kind of a rough mark are looking for somewhere between 10 and 20% of the capital we're being we're using on a naked position to make it worth the risk. And when you factor in kind of this is just the raw return on capital if you were to get 100% of the max profit. When you're managing at 50%, you want to make sure that it's worth the time and I'm looking to get somewhere between 5 and 10% return on capital managing at 50%. Like that's my that's my metric. If you're a little bit risk averse, maybe you're looking for less of that but it's important to understand just the the probability of profit is something that's very dynamic, and that's kind of what this segment's going to get into here. Um, any thoughts on this one, Mike? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, we, we see this all the time, and it's really why we kind of center our strategies around the 16 to 30 delta, we'll call it. I mean, you can get as high as 50, 50 delta if you're selling premium right at the money, but we we stray away from selling pennies in front of a steamroller. Yes. Um, where you're no. you're selling the tail options. I mean, yes, you can do it, but that can come with much more buying power requirement volatility, and you have a really high pop. You have a really low return on capital. So, uh, of course, there's many ways to look at the markets, but this is why we're kind of in this 16 to 30 delta range normally to make sure that we're collecting enough premium to give ourselves a decent return on capital while still being in that high pop range of 60 to 70 to 80%. And this is SPY. Yeah. When you, when you look at higher volatility underlyings, 
you know, you could directly or or very much um, uh, you can like kind of price these based on the volatility. So SPY implied volatility, which is relatively high right now with the VIX around 20, is at about 21, 22 percent. You go to a 40 percent implied volatility and the options are going to move very much further out of the money relative to that stock price. But you can basically increase these return on capitals by 2x, right? So the 20 delta put is probably going to be somewhere around a 10 or 15% return on capital just because the volatility is a lot higher and you're probably using a similar amount of, of capital to hold that, that position because higher volatility underlyings, when you're selling premium, it's going to be further out of the money, which means the relative risk in that position is going to be a little bit lesser. Indeed. SPY at 666 right now. Scary. Scary. Spooky, spooky. Next slide here. So getting into pop. So pop is a range based as a range based on where the short strikes are placed. So the range for the true probability of profit uh, is bound by the following formula. So the highest possible pop is going to be 100 minus the delta of the short strike. So you sell 30 delta put, it's going to be a 70% pop. It's an inverse uh, trade. If you buy that put, it's going to be a 30% pop. And that pop is just probability of making one penny on that trade. When you're looking at um, uh, for naked strangles, you have to keep in mind that you have risk on both sides. And so it gets a little bit dynamic when you're, you know, doing a, a 16 delta strangle, you have a roughly, you know, 68% probability of success because you have 16, uh, 16 probability of being outside on the call side, 16% of being outside on the put side. So it's a little bit more dynamic when you're talking about two-sided positions. Uh, the lowest pop is going to be two times the delta of the short strike. So 100 minus two times the delta of the short strike. This is your probability of, of touch. So this is a probability of being you know, tested on that strike. So you're selling a 30 delta put. It's about a 40, 60% um, uh, probability of being touched, which means it's about a 40% you know, possible probability of losing on that trade. So you got to keep in mind that even though you're selling high probability trades, there's a high probability that you're going to be touched at some point during that position, during that trade. It doesn't change the metrics on entry. They are what they are based on the current market. But, um, you know, it's just something to keep in mind that just because it's a 70% pop, that's not sticky. It's not static um, for, those, uh, for those trades. Yeah, I think it's it just goes hand in hand with the idea that uh, you know when you're you're still you're still trading and engaging in volatile markets, even if it's a low IV environment. Like you, if you're selling a strangle or selling a put or selling a call, like you should be expecting to see some kind of move against you at some point during that trade. Mm -hmm. Like it's very rare for you to sell a put and then just have the market go straight up and you have no you have no resistance at all. Yes, like you could still be profitable on that trade over time, but you might see some chop against you and then a rally and some more chop against you and then a rally. And over time, that that decay is what uh, helps you get out of that trade. But yeah, I think just realizing that just because something has a high pop doesn't mean you're not going to get tested. Mm. You, you, we're always going to deal with trades that are tested. Yes. Next one, please. So this is your max pop and minimum pop ranges here. It's an interesting chart, and I, I love this visual here. Based on delta and then the probability, of course, on the other axis, axis here. So because higher deltas often comes with more volatility, iron condors that have a 30 or 40 delta short strike have a very wide range of true pop values, uh, depending on where you place the short strike. So iron condors with a 10 or 20 delta short strike have a narrow pop range. And so you, when you're further out of the money, the probabilities become more... Uh, uh, more, uh, they have less variance to them, and that makes perfect sense because you're selling tail options. So a lot of you know a lot of the probabilities are going to play out when you're getting closer at the money. Your probabilities are going to be le less sticky to what they are. Um, you know, you can see here when you're using at the money options, you're going to be holding the trade a lot longer. You're going to have a lot more price movement in and out of that trade, and so you know the probabilities are not as sticky in that situation. Yeah, and just realizing, you know, you're thinking back to the formulas we discussed, 
your max pop is your pop without being tested. Your min pop is your pop while being tested. You can see these ranges are still quite substantial, uh, all things considered. Yes. Next one here. So when we trade a typical tasty trade style short premium trade, we tend to have a pop between 60 and 80%. This is your kind of cookie cutter, uh, you know, 20 to 30 delta short put or 20 to 30 delta short option for a strangle. It's going to be somewhere in the, the 60 to 80% probability of profit. Depending on the strategy and the deltas we select, this is typically where we're trading. Although it is easy to interpret what pop is on the trade basis, when it comes to multiple independent trades on, it's easy to misinterpret what the pop actually tells you, especially regarding streaks or of wins and losses. What, it, what we're saying is just because every trade you put on is somewhere between a 60 and 80% pop, it doesn't mean that all of, of your trades together are going to be a 60 to 80% probability because they're all independent trades and they're all going to change based on dynamics uh, in the market. And so you know, looking at each trade specifically is a little bit more, um, is a little bit easier to think of rather than the portfolio as a whole. Yeah. And, you know, you, you could have, you could have a high pop trade where you're selling a call spread on SPY, and then you have a high pop trade where you're selling a put spread on the queues. Um, just understanding like those trades individually are, are high pop, but when you put them together, you have a much more narrow range if you assume that they're going to be positively correlated. So just understanding that uh, we look at probability of profit, we take it uh, seriously, but we also need to realize that there's going to be situations where we have a high pop trade that we're tested on, or we have a couple of high pop trades that might offset each other. Uh, so just thinking holistically, I think makes a lot of sense. Um scalping through just naturally, naturally. absolute junkie today <laughs> next slide here so this is a cool one so this table compares the pro the profit probability and the chance of winning streaks based on the initial pop so even with a high pop of somewhere between 70 and 90 percent a slight drop in pop sharply reduces the odds of three or four wins in a row and so when you're you, the way you can look at this is like if you put on a 90% pop trade and that pop goes to 70%, meaning you're getting tested on that trade, the probability of those trades, all of those 90% trades, if you're doing multiple of these, being profitable dr drastically decreases. Like you go to a, you know, a four trade win streak of 24% on a 70% pop, you would think if you're, you would think they're all independent that they're all going to be 70% shots. But when you put them all together, the probability of the streak decreases. And it tells you that through a lot of trades and occurrences, you should expect to have positions go against you. Yeah. Like that is the point here is that even if you're trading high probability, you're going to see stuff not play out in your favor, even if it's high probability. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same as like flipping a coin. Like, you know, it's 50 50 in the long run, but I could flip 10 heads 10 times pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. And that's not, that's, that's not out of the realm of, of probabilities on a longer data set. Yep. Love this, it. This is a really good one. I like this one. And, and you got to keep in mind pop is the probability of making a penny yes. or losing a penny. Right. So this isn't max loss, this isn't tail risk. This is just the win or loss based on just a binary penny amount. Um, that's why a lot of you know a lot of people look at like the max risk and they're like, if I'm losing the max risk every single time and only making fifty percent of the credit, you know this doesn't work. It's not a, it's it, you can't zero sum it because pop is is very variable and the the wins and losses are variable as well. The losses specifically and the probability of of realizing X amount of a loss is very, very variable. Mm -hmm. Very, very variable. Very, 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 very. A lot of varies. Next slide here. Um, so the purpose here is to show that the probability of seeing multiple consecutive wins is usually much lower than people expect for a trade, even if it has high pop. So you have to keep in mind that when you're talking about like lots of occurrences, it doesn't necessarily mean each one is, is independent when you look at them as a batch. The lower the initial pop, 
the starker the drop in probability of seeing con consecutive streaks. And this makes perfect sense. If you're trading mostly 70% pops, those should be a wider distribution than if you're trading mostly 90% probability because the 90% is further out of the money. It's a higher pop. Yeah. It's like building a parlay with low probability legs. Like your, your odds are going to get juiced up against you. Each one, even if Each they're all one. high probability. Yeah. And that's just a matter of hitting, you know, consecutive, hitting things consecutively is significantly harder than uh, independent results.